In this video, we'll be managing users in our admin panel. And that means we'll have to cater for creating, reading, updating and deleting users. Basic crud, so to speak. We'll have to make provisions for other things as well. For instance, a user email address should be unique unless it's the email address of the user we're updating. Also, we need to be able to leave the password field empty if we have an update, but it needs to be required if we are inserting a new user. We already have a user controller in the admin folder, so let's open that up. We'll start by creating CRUD methods. Let's create an index method to display a listing of users first. And then we'll add an edit method that takes an optional ID, and that will be for inserting or updating a user. Uh, finally, we'll create a delete method as well, which takes an ID as a parameter. Now, we do not need to define methods for CRUD in our model because we already added those to our base model. Okay, so let's start with the index method. We'll just create a variable called users and fetch all users from the database and store it in there. Next, we'll set a subview called admin slash users slash index. And let's just load the layout, the main layout, which will be admin slash underscore layout underscore main. And that's all there is to it. Now we'll need to create the sub view. So let's go to views, admin, user, and create a view file called index.php. And let's add HTML to that file while we have it open. Let's start with the section and add a page heading users. Next, we'll need to add a link for adding a new user. And we'll just use the CodeIgniter anchor function for that. And finally, we need a table to display the users we have so far. So let's add a table with a class of table and add an extra table striped class to cater for alternating rows. Now we'll need a row with three table heads, one for email, one for the edit button and one for the delete button. Now, if we have users, the actual data is displayed in a row with three table cells as well. So let's check to see if we have any users here. And then if we do, let's loop through all these users using a simple for each statement. And I'll just close out these statements as well so we don't get any errors. So for each user, we will display his email address. And let's just wrap that into CodeIgniter's anchor function again and make it link to the edit URI so that if we click it, we go to the edit page immediately. And I have a feeling we'll be creating lots of edit and delete links as well. So let's create helper functions for those. First of all, we'll create a CMS underscore helper file inside of the helpers folder. Then we'll go into the config folder and open up autoload.php. Now let's add the CMS helper to be autoloaded. Okay, now inside of our new helper file, let's add two functions, button edit and button delete. They will both take a URI parameter. Now inside of button edit, we'll return an anchor that will point to the URI from the parameter. The text for this anchor will be an I tag with a class of I can edit to display a Twitter bootstrap edit button there. Now inside of our new helper file, let's add two functions, button edit and button delete. They will both take a URI parameter. Now inside of button edit, we'll return an anchor tag that will point to the URI from the parameter. The text for this anchor will be an I tag with a class of icon edit to display a Twitter bootstrap edit icon. Now the button delete function will return a similar anchor, but with a class of icon remove. Also, we'll want to insert some JavaScript there to display an alert box that will ask the user if he's really sure he wants to delete this record. Now that script will return the confirm button that was clicked. So if the user clicks false, it will return false and the link will not be visited. Ergo, the record will not be deleted. Okay, back to our display view. Let's just add an edit button here. All right, like that. And let's just add a delete button there. Just copy that. Now let's also add an else pass to our if statement that will run if we have no users. And that will just display a table cell, call spanner three, and say no users were found. 
Okay, now let's go to the browser and see if it all works. Well, first of all, it nags about meta title not being set. So let's just check that. And yes, we forgot to pass this data into the view. So let's check again. And we're still not seeing the sub view. So let's open the main layout and see if we can find a problem there. And as you can see, the sub view is not being loaded there yet. So let's just fix that. One more try. And it looks like we're getting the proper page. Now let's just check the links. So let's start by clicking add a user link and that leads us to users slash edit. So that's fine. Next, let's click the email address and that leads us to the user slash edit and then the ID of the users for an update. So that's fine as well. Now let's click the edit link that leads us to user edit and that's not okay. We need an ID there. And I'm guessing probably the same will go for the delete link. And yes, that's not the proper link either. That needs to have the ID set as well. So let's just go back to the view file one more time. And let's revise that. Maybe fix the edit link and fix the delete link like so. Make sure we add a slash as well. So we'll go over it one more time. And yes, the edit link is working just fine now. And so is the delete link. Okay, so that's all. Okay, time to edit a user. First of all, we need to fetch the user if this is an update. And if it's an update, we have an ID. So let's just assume that we have no user ID. But then if we do, we'll fetch the user for that ID and store them into a variable. Next, we'll need to set a sub view and load the main layout. And I'll just create a snippet for that because we're going to have to do that in almost every method. Just open up text expander and add a snippet there and we're good to go. So that snippet has been created. So let's go ahead to load that view here, name the view file edit and we're good to go. Of course, we need to create that view file. So let's do that inside of views admin user. Now we'll need to put some code in as well. Let's just create something similar to the login form. So I'll just open that up, copy the code and paste it back in here and just clean that up a little. Now let's just check if we're getting anything. Now it seems like the sub view wasn't set correctly. So let's quickly alter that. And that's more like it. Now let's first add a heading depending on whether we have a valid ID or not. And let's just check that in the browser. Okay, that's working if we have no ID. Now let's see what happens if we add an ID to the URL. And yeah, that works just fine. Next, we need to set up validation. Now we already have a rules array. So let's just copy that and rename it to rules underscore admin. Now let's add the fields. We already have an email field, but we need the email to be unique. Now we could use code igniters is unique validation rule, but that would get us into trouble because think about it. If we're updating a user, that rule will find an existing email address for that user. So it will not validate. That's not a good idea. So let's add a custom callback function and call it callback underscore underscore unique underscore email. And we'll code that callback function in a minute. So let's carry on. We also have a password field, but if we're doing an update, we need to be able to leave that empty. So let's remove required. Next, I'd like to have a password confirm field. We'll have a name of password underscore confirm and the label of password confirm. It needs to match the password field. Similarly, the password field needs to match the password confirm field. Now we need a name field, of course, with a label of name. And let's just delete some rules there that we don't need. Also, we'll need an order field with a label of order. And we'll just trim that and make sure it's a natural number. Okay, so that's rules array. Now let's just code that callback validation method. It was called callback underscore underscore unique underscore email. And we'll just add it to the bottom of the controller. But without the first callback underscore. And this is why we added the extra underscore. We do not want it to be accessible through the URI. So how does it work? Well, basically, we'll try to fetch a user from the database by their email. And if we find one, we know the email already exists. So let's set that up. We'll just do a where statement for that. And next, we'll use the get method that we created in the base controller. 
Now, if we find a user, we will have to set an error message. And we will also have to return false. And this will tell CodeIgniter that the rule did not validate and it will make it display the proper message. And we'll just add return true and that will be executed if we haven't returned false before. Now, the way we set this up is pretty much how the default is unique validation rules for CodeIgniter's form validation. So let's add in our exception here. We should look for the email, but not for the current user. So let's assume we have no user ID. But then if we do, let's add a where statement. Do not include the current user ID. So where do we get that ID from? Well, it's in the URI. So let's retrieve it. ID is URI segment three, no four, sorry. And there's our custom callback. Now we need to set the form to use validation. Now we already did that in the login method. So let's just go there and copy that code. Next, we'll paste it into the edit method and clean it up. Make sure we're using the rules underscore admin property. Also, we need to hack into the rules here because if we're inserting a user, the password needs to be required. So let's assume we have a user ID. And then if we don't, let's add required. Okay, we're ready to test it in the browser. First, let's add a new user. Okay, now let's add in my email and we should get an error because there is already a user with that email address. Okay, so that's good. Now let's edit my account. The fields are still empty here, but we'll soon fix that. We'll just add in my email address there and we should not get an error because it's my email address and that works. Remember, if you're having problems with custom callbacks, just turn to the user guide. It's explained quite well there. Okay, and that's it for today. In the next video, we'll be populating the form and saving the user. See you then.